This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Gotham City, a sprawling metropolis cloaked in perpetual darkness. With its incessant rain and gothic architecture, it really sets an ominous tone. That ominous tone would follow the production of the doomed Gotham City film Batgirl, a film that had a cast list of stars and rising stars that were unceremoniously dumped and abandoned by Warner Brothers in an unprecedented move that shook the industry. From the directors finding out at their wedding, to secret screenings dubbed funeral screenings, and even more drama, join us as we take a look at one of the most expensive movies to never make it to theaters on our abandoned film series. What took you so long, Batgirl? Rush hour traffic, plus all the lights were against me. And you wouldn't have wanted me to speed, would you? Your good driving habits almost cost us our lives. Batgirl as a character has quite a long history. The first introduction of a woman to the Bat family was Batwoman, the alias of a character called Kathy Kane, introduced all the way back in 1956. The character of Batgirl, though, first emerged a few years later in 1961 as a sidekick to Batwoman. Batgirl was introduced as Betty Kane, Batwoman's cousin. These characters didn't last long though, as in 1964 Batgirl and Batwoman and a number of the other characters were scrapped due to declining sales of Batman and DC Comics. But in 1966, Batman made it onto the silver screen and soon after got his own TV show, and the showrunners got the idea to revive Batgirl. Are you fumbling Balinskis? I was sticking your nose in my business. Well this time I'm gonna teach you a lesson. As long as you're holding classes pending, perhaps you'd include Batgirl, too. Batgirl? Batgirl? Batgirl! Batgirl? Bats! I'm surrounded by bats! This new version of the character was presented as Barbara Gordon, the daughter of Gotham City's police commissioner, Jim Gordon, and was a much more popular character, with comics writer Carmen Infantino going on to say that comic writer Bob Kane had a Batgirl for about three stories in the 50s, but she had nothing to do with a bat. She was like a pesky girl version of Robin, and I knew we could do a lot better. So Julie and I came up with the real Batgirl, who was so popular, she almost got her own TV show. The character became a staple of the DC Universe, featuring as a recurring character in comics, TV shows, games, and more. But she mostly appeared as more of a sidekick than a main character. And one of the initial attempts to have a female Bat character take the lead was the Batwoman TV show released by the CW Network. You're a female Bruce Wayne. Awesome. Hilarious. Handsome. I'm not about to let a man take credit for a woman's work but sadly the show performed very poorly with mixed ratings from critics and a disastrous reception from audiences being scrapped after three seasons. But behind the scenes with the DC film franchise known as the DC Extended Universe, there were attempts to bring Batgirl onto the big screen. The idea was first suggested during the making of Birds of Prey, a movie focused around the character of Margot Robbie's Harley Quinn, as well as a team of other female leads. Batgirl was suggested as a potential character for the film, but producer Sue Kroll revealed during his production that she had been scrapped. Instead, the decision was made to give Batgirl her own film, with Joss Whedon being brought on as a writer, director, and producer in 2017, with the production being planned for 2018. However, the project was stalled and in 2018, Whedon quit the project. The main reasons were a bit mixed, but the main cause of his departure was reportedly that he just couldn't come up with a vision for the film, but it was also suggested that he as a man would have faced increased scrutiny as the director of a female-led film. And there might have been something to this as Warner Brothers looked to hire a woman to replace him. Later that year, Birds of Prey screenwriter and co-producer Christina Hodson was brought on to carry on with the script. So the wheels were put back into motion, but things trundled along slowly, and news on the film was lacking until 2020, when it was revealed that Batgirl was one of the productions planned for a streaming-only release instead of a showcase in cinemas. The film finally found a director the year after, or rather its co-directors, as director duo Adila L. Arby and Bilal Fala signed onto the film. Interestingly, despite Warner's alleged anxieties over men taking the lead with female characters, they picked a male duo to head the development on Batgirl. <laughs> YouTube troll can take many forms. A uh, no photo troll? A troll who must have watched a different video because the comment makes no sense troll. The scariest troll of them all is the chief troll. 
The chief troll organizes the other trolls for attack, sometimes even trolling the trolls. But the chief troll needs to organize and present his business professionally, just like anyone else. And that's where today's sponsor, Squarespace, steps in to help. With their new Fluid Engine, a troll can quickly set up a website without all of that hassle of trying to type out all that complicated coding. They can click it, drag it, and snap it into place with ease. Set up a member's access page for his troll clients. And set up a gallery of his best trolls yet all on a stylish and modern website with tons of templates to choose from. And even though he's currently trolling Frame Voyager, he really thinks you should head on over to squarespace.com slash Frame Voyager to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code Frame Voyager. So maybe you all control Frame Voyager together. We welcome engagement. Let's see what Batgirl can do. With the project's leads in place, the rest of the pieces started to come together, with testing for Batgirl's characters beginning in July 2021. After a short process, the potential actors had been narrowed down to two favorites, Haley Lou Richardson and Leslie Grace, who was just coming off starring in the movie In the Heights. Leslie Grace ultimately won out, and other castmates really liked her casting for this role. And, yeah, and, yeah. and she was wonderful. Oh, gosh, she was good. Really terrific. She's a firecracker. Like, like dynamite comes in small packages for a reason. Like she's a dynamo. J.K. Simmons returned to his role as Commissioner Gordon after first playing the character in Justice League. Brendan Fraser signed on as Firefly, the main villain, and even Michael Keaton, who played Batman in the Tim Burton Batman films, returned as the caped crusader in what would be his second reprisal of the role alongside his reappearance in The Flash. Principal filming began in November under the working title Cherry Hill, with the Scottish city of Glasgow serving as the backdrop for Batgirl's Gotham City. In March 2022, principal filming wrapped and it was off to the editing suite, with everything seemingly going according to plan. And in April, Warner Brothers were even discussing investing more money into the film and giving it a theatrical release. And during this time, talks were even beginning for a sequel. Although nothing was set in stone, things were looking pretty bright. In that April period, the directors were actually forced to drop another project, Beverly Hills Cop 4, to focus on Batgirl, which at first seemed to be a response to making it a theatrical release, but could have signaled issues behind the scenes. Anxiety over the production was growing due to Warner Brothers' merger with Discovery, but even so, not many were expecting what happens next. Now what's going on over at HBO Max? Now that is what a lot of fans are saying right now as the streaming service is about to remove 36 titles from its online catalog, including 20 HBO originals. Now according to Variety, the move is partially being done to make way for the pending Warner Brothers Discovery platform merge, which will- In August 2022, the newly merged company began cuts left and right and center as the HBO Max and Discovery Plus streaming platforms were merged into the Max platform. Employees on both teams were laid off. The company also dropped dozens of titles from their streaming services. And as a part of this purge, Batgirl topped that list. Well, studio executives have done what comic villains have tried to do for years. They apparently killed Batgirl. The movie has tested so poorly that the studio behind it calls it irredeemable. The studios decided to scrap the film's release entirely, even though the movie's already been shot. It's gonna cost them 90 million bucks. Of course, the reputation of both the writers, the directors, the lead actress, yeah. the other actors in it, uh, it that gets rubbish to I don't know. I think you still gotta give the audiences a chance. Whoa. And out of all the content to be purged, Batgirl was probably the least expected. The directors were completely blindsided by this, being shocked with the news while taking away time in Morocco for Adil El Arbi's wedding. So we wanted to explain actually the day that we found out about uh, Batgirl getting canceled. So we were at Adil's wedding. Congratulations, bro. Thank you, thank you. It was beautiful. It was Morocco. Thank God that my beautiful superhero wife uh, was there with me to support me through these times. I was in Tetuan. I was visiting the grave of my grandfather and grandmother and when I was leaving um, I picked up my phone and I saw there was a lot of messages I got a call and they said to me that girl is done yeah, I was in Tangiers in a hotel honeymooning with my wife and all of a sudden I got a phone call meanwhile I was getting messages and they said they're gonna kill the movie and when I heard that I was shocked because I, I didn't even realize that was a possibility it was as if we were doing movie history right there in fact they actually are reported to have made a last-ditch attempt to save the movie attempting to back up the footage and then when that didn't work recorded on their phones. But they quickly found out that they had been locked out of Warner Brothers servers. Called right away Martin Walsh, the editor, and said, yo, you gotta pack up that 
watch it, you know, back up, copy the movie. And then they called me and I said, yo, yo, shoot it on your phone. So I went on the server and everything was blocked. Yeah, I apologize. That's not the right thing to do, but I was panicking, you know. Yeah, it was, was an emotional just, reaction. It was emotional. It's not good. It's not good to do piracy. But, you know, it was just, what do we do? What do you do? And to see that the movie was gone, that we didn't have any access to the footage or able to see it for ourselves again, that was pretty, pretty harsh. It was painful. I was emotional. It was shocking. The reasoning behind the cancellation is heavily disputed and littered with conspiracy theories and rumors. Some have claimed that the film performed so badly in test screenings that it was abandoned pretty much straight away. Others suggested that the film's initial, made for streaming format, didn't match the theatrical blockbuster style new Warner Brother Discovery CEO David Zlav had demanded. With executives not being willing to spend the extra seven to nine million dollars expected to bring it up to this new standard. But others denied the claims that the film was of poor quality, with the news outlet Deadline reporting that the film had only been tested once and that the response from the audience wasn't really that bad, with the cause of some of the negativity being chalked up to unfinished visual effects. Have you seen Possibly. the actual have you I've seen not, the film? No, no, I've not. not. No, no. I have I have friends and co-workers and, and associates who've seen it. They, they all say really good things about it, but the thing about it was, is it was screened in a garden variety test screening. It was the director's cut, first cut. It, mm. it wasn't finished. I mean, right. I don't know about you, but I don't eat half-baked cake. I don't want to <laughs> right. see something that's not ready yet. And the sad thing is, is that I don't know if it was judged on the merit. It wasn't shown in the best light that it could have had been. Um, I mean, yes, once you give a film to the people in the world, yeah, it's, op it's open season to criticize it or praise it or whatever you want. But this didn't even really get a fair shake. And, and that's, you know, that's disappointing. Uh, for we, just, we were just starting to really get somewhere with the post-production. And there was no VFX, so there were scenes that were missing reshoot. The directors themselves even came out to hit back at the rumors surrounding Batgirl's quality, stating that they had been told by Warner Discovery that the cancellation wasn't a talent issue with them, the actors or even the quality of the movie. But if that was the case, then we're left with an obvious question. Why the hell would Warner Brothers cancel a film that only had the finishing touches left to put on it if it wasn't a quality control issue? Well, unfortunately, the answer seems to be quite simple money. And director LRB claimed in an interview that Warner Brothers had told him that with the restructuring following the Warner and Discovery merger, the new company just wanted to save some money. Deadline reported that the move was part of an accounting maneuver, where dropping the film after the merger allowed Warner Discovery to dodge responsibility for its losses, and the Variety outlet mentioned a potential tax write-off as a likely result of the cancellation. Obviously, Warner Brothers' decision to drop what was essentially a close-to-finished film to avoid a tax debt caused a a lot of anger. One of the first to show this anger was then head of DC Films, Walter Hamada. He was not even included in this decision making and found out at the same time everyone else did. After this debacle, he made it clear he had planned to quit, but he was persuaded to stay on until the release of another DC production, Black Adam, in October 2022. After the news broke, other insiders reached out to the news outlets to express their shock, and some audiences soon caught on to the outrage, with fans launching a release backroll movement, bringing back memories of the released the Snyder Cut protests that surrounded Justice League for years. Batgirl seems to be the latest in a line of studio meddling, because this is the third time these kinds of complaints have emerged over the years. While the debate over the Snyder Cut was the most well-known, David Iyer, the director of the original Suicide Squad, raised similar concerns over the theatrical release of that film. Suicide Squad. That, that broke me. People hijack narratives, control narratives, create narratives to empower themselves, right? They never tested Batman versus Superman. So, so they put the movie out there and they never did a test. We're expecting a different result and then they got hammered by all the critics. And then it's like, okay, we're gonna turn David Ayer's dark, soulful movie into a comedy now. <laughs> I became the bad guy narratively Oh, he's a tough director, he's hard to work with, or this or that, right? In the case of the Iyer cut, though, James Gunn reportedly promised Iyer that his cut will get a chance to see the light of day. But with Batgirl, that fate is much less likely, because the film's cancellation was related to Warner Brothers' tax and debt write-offs, meaning that the studio now has a very strong financial incentive to ensure that this film never sees the light of day. And these details have gotten the attention of the US Congress, with some lawmakers who previously scrutinized the Warner Discovery merger slamming Warner Brothers for their perceived 
perceived harm to both consumers and workers in their aggressive measures, calling the studio to be investigated under antitrust regulations. Whether anything comes out of that, we're yet to see, as we all know how slow government moves. But so far, it seems like DC are holding firm. The film received a final series of secret screenings for cast and crew dubbed funeral screenings in August 2022, and since then, as far as outsiders know, the footage has been under lock and key, with very little regret being shown for the loss. In early 2023, Peter Safran, the new co-head of DC franchise along James Gunn, went as far as praising David Sislav for his bold and courageous decision to drop the film in the press conference that unveiled the plans for the new DCU franchise, showing that Batgirl is really lacking sympathy from DC's new management. Now, it's true that it's not abnormal for films to get canceled. Lots of films don't see the light of day for many reasons reasons, with DC releasing flop after flop with sadly very few exceptions. It's understandable in a way that Batgirl suffered this fate. But what stands Batgirl out from the rest is how far along this film was, and the reality is that we don't know if Batgirl was a good movie, or a bad one, or just mediocre, and we never will. But what we do know is how much progress was made on it, and when all the lines had been written, the actors had given their performances, the score was composed, what was left was the VFX and other elements of post-production work. And that makes this different, as there was already a lot of capital spent in making this. In a way, it's absolutely not fair for Warner Brothers to abandon this film this far along in development, considering at the same time they allowed movies like Blue Beetle to continue on with their development and eventual release, which to be completely honest, Blue Beetle's a much lesser known superhero film around the same budget as Batgirl and seemed a lot less likely to do better at the box office. And let's hope that this sort of thing does not become common. But did you know that Warner Brothers had a hand in building yet another controversial figure in the film industry? a website that can take films down with just a rating? That's right, check out the shocking history of Rotten Tomatoes here.